If you're planning on visiting SeaWorld Orlando, then get ready because you're about to learn everything you need to know about the park. Things like, when is the best time to visit, where are the best places to buy tickets, what rides should you experience first, and what are the best restaurants. You do not want to miss hearing my SeaWorld Orlando must-know tips near the end of the video, including the secret aquarium that most visitors don't even know about. Now I know this video is very long, but trust me, just by watching it, you're going to enjoy SeaWorld so much more if you did not watch this video. To start off, let's go over everything you need to know before you are at the park. When is the best time to visit SeaWorld Orlando? The Florida theme parks are open every day of the year, which is great news for you because you can plan on visiting the parks around your schedule. However, the best months to visit SeaWorld Orlando would be February, late April, and May. And as for the fall, September and November are also perfect times to visit. Not only will the park be less busy during these months, you will also not have to deal with as hot of weather. When are the best days to visit? With more Florida locals visiting SeaWorld than any other theme park in Orlando, this makes Saturday and Sundays even more busy at the park. So if you can, I recommend trying to visit on a weekday because the park will not be near as busy. How many days do you need to take in all that SeaWorld Orlando offers? And with the rapid growth that we have seen out of SeaWorld Orlando over the last few years, you can't experience every exhibit, see every show, and enjoy all the rides and roller coasters in just one day. After all, SeaWorld Orlando is the roller coaster capital here in Central Florida. So I recommend giving yourself at least one full day minimum to be in the park. But I would advise at least a day and a half. Is the quick queue worth it? Yes. Unlike most theme parks, when you purchase the quick queue, you will not only be able to skip the regular standby queues at these attractions, you'll also be able to sit in the reserved seating for the shows. Now don't worry, if you do not want to see any shows, you can still buy quick queue and it's even cheaper. Now at the time of this video, you can only access the quick queue line once for Pipeline the Surf Coaster, while all the other rides you can ride unlimited. Now when you compare it to Universal, on busy days, you cannot beat SeaWorld Orlando's quick queue cost and the benefits. Recommended nearby hotels. SeaWorld Orlando is in the perfect location since it's located right off Interstate 4 and 528. Therefore, you will find a bunch of hotels and resorts that are located within a half mile from the park. I have personally stayed at the Hilton Grand Vacations Club, which was so amazing. And I have also stayed at the Hampton Inn, located this close to the park, as well as the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott. All three of these locations are within walking distance of SeaWorld Orlando. Should you purchase the all-day dining deal? And here's my first of many money savings tip for you. And that is, if you plan on staying at the park for lunch and dinner, then you will save money by purchasing the all-day dining deal. For $49.99 per person, you can get an entree and a side, plus a non-alcoholic beverage every 90 minutes. And if you think spending $50 on two meals while at SeaWorld sounds a bit steep, you're actually going to save money by doing this since your drink is included. So yes, I recommend purchasing it if you're going to get two meals out of it. But the best part is, is you can get more meals out of it because it's every 90 minutes. What are the best places to purchase tickets? And my best advice is this. Do not purchase your tickets at the park. Trust me, it's going to save you so much time if you purchase them in advance before you get to the main entrance. Not only will this save you money, but again, it's going to save you a ton of time. Money savings tip. I would definitely check out Groupon for discount tickets because you can usually find them there. SeaWorld Parking Tips At the time of this video, general parking is $30 while preferred parking is $45. Money Savings Tip 
if you get to the parking tolls before 9.30 in the morning, which I recommend doing, I would pass on upgrading to preferred parking since you'll get a parking spot just as close without spending the extra money. Now, if you arrive after 9.30 in the morning, especially on a weekend, then I honestly recommend upgrading for $15 for the preferred parking. Stroller and wheelchair rentals. Just like every other Florida theme park, you can rent everything you need for your day in this building located here which is just a short walk from the main entrance, and here's the current pricing for the rentals. Dog kennels. If you're traveling with your pet, just like we do all the time, then good news because SeaWorld Orlando offers a very nice pet kennel that is located just to the right of the security checkpoint. We bring our dog Minion here all the time. Upgrades and Animal Encounter add-ons. SeaWorld Orlando is not like your typical theme park. There are more animal exhibits and shows than rides and roller coasters, and that creates a whole new level of fun and memories. I recommend looking over all the upgrades and animal counter add-ons before you visit because they are really worth it. And for me personally, I recommend the Dolphin Up Close Tour. What are the height requirements for the rides and roller coasters? And here's a look at the current requirements for all the rides at SeaWorld Orlando. Download the SeaWorld app. By using the app, you can purchase tickets, check out the wait times, view the show schedule, explore the park map, and so much more. I highly recommend downloading this app because it is a lifesaver. Now, if you're finding my SeaWorld Orlando Insider's Guide to be helpful, then I really hope you consider giving this video a like. That is the best way you can help support the time it takes to make these Theme Park Insider Guide videos. Also, be sure to check out these other Insider Guides for some of the most popular theme parks here in America. The links for these will be in the description of this video. Is Aquatica, SeaWorld's water park and Discovery Cove worth it? Yes, Aquatica is such a good water park and Discovery Cove is a one-of-a-kind must-see attraction. Now I'm working on videos showcasing more about each of these parks, so look for those to be released soon. Money Savings Tip You will save money if you purchase a combo ticket for both SeaWorld Orlando and Aquatica. I highly recommend checking out both parks, they're both worth it, and this will save you money. When should you arrive at the park? Always before opening, which is 9 a.m. And here's something important for you to know. SeaWorld Orlando opens up in two phases. The rides and attractions highlighted in green open at park opening. The rides and attractions that are highlighted in pink open at 10 a.m. So again, I recommend getting there right at 9 a.m. so you can beat the rush of people trying to get into the park. Because without being too negative, SeaWorld Orlando's parking tolls and front gate is a cluster when it's busy and it takes what seems like forever just to get into the park once the lines start to fill up. Always give yourself more time so you can get organized at your car before you walk to the front gate. Always plan your day. With all the shows and animal encounters, be sure to plan your day around which shows you want to see and be sure to give yourself a nice buffer window in between each show. Now it's time to learn about the recommendations for while you're at SeaWorld Orlando. What rides should you ride first? If you get there right around 9 a.m., then I recommend heading right to Pipeline, which is the brand new stand-up coaster. And this ride is great, but it does offer the longest and slowest moving line. You can always head to Manta first, which is the park's flying coaster, to get ahead of the crowds because these two rides are always the busiest the first part of the day. If you have kids, then I recommend getting to Sesame Street Land right around 10 a.m. so you can enjoy all the rides and attractions there the first hour without having any real lines to deal with. What roller coaster should you ride at night? When SeaWorld stays open later, you gotta ride Mako and Pipeline at night. Both of these rides offer great night rides, especially the park's hypercoaster Mako. How to cool off at SeaWorld Orlando. Be sure to take breaks throughout your day and explore one of the many indoor animal attractions. 
Also, the park is home to two amazing must-ride water attractions in Journey to Atlantis and Infinity Falls. Do not miss out on an opportunity to pet a stingray. Yes, you cannot visit SeaWorld and not pet a stingray. This free experience is always a must. Explore the underwater views. Some exhibits offer some amazing underwater views of the animals, and those exhibits would be the wild arctic, the manatees, dolphins, orcas, and beluga whales. Now it's time to talk about the must-see exhibits. And starting off with the Manta Aquarium. This by far is the most beautiful exhibit at SeaWorld Orlando. And the best part is, is you do not have to ride the coaster in order to experience this exhibit because it offers its own separate entrance. The Shark Encounter. This is always a blast going through the underwater tunnels. Antarctica Penguin Encounter. While a little chilly, this is always a great time and it's a great way to cool off as well. Sea Lion Point. You can get up close and feed these amazing chill sea lions. The Wild Arctic. Do not sleep on this massive indoor exhibit. It's really well done and you're going to get to see a walrus and beluga whales. With all this fun you're having at SeaWorld Orlando, you're bound to get hungry. So here are my recommendations for the best places to eat. And the good news for you is SeaWorld offers some of the best theme park food in Florida. But here are the top places that I recommend and these are where I eat when I visit the park. Seafire Grill. You are going to find lots of great options for food here for the entire family. Sharks Underwater Grill and Bar. This is the park's only real sit down full service restaurant and it does not disappoint. I recommend making reservations in advance and you have to try the coconut chicken tenders. Voyager Smokehouse. You're going to find great barbecue and delicious sides at this beautiful restaurant. And if you love a good old pretzel, then you want to save some room for the amazing Mama's Pretzel Kitchen. Trust me, it's worth it. If you are not planning on doing the all-day dining deal, and you want to get an up-close and personal encounter with the Orcas, then you have to check out Dine with Orcas. Seriously, this wonderful full-service dining experience is awesome and you cannot beat the value of it. What should you wear while you're visiting SeaWorld Orlando? And here's a fair warning, humidity will not be your friend while you're in Orlando. Just saying, it gets so humid down there. So make sure you dress light, even in the winter months, it's usually pretty hot in Central Florida. So I recommend sunscreen, sunglasses, a hat, and light clothing. And if you're looking for some comfortable and affordable coaster gear, then you have to check out the official Theme Park Predictions Coaster Gear Store. SeaWorld Orlando with Kids. Not only will the kids love all the animal exhibits, they are also going to not want to leave the Sesame Street land. This area features seven rides including Super Grover's Boxcar Derby Family Roller Coaster and a great water splash pad area and not to mention a great outdoor play area as well. I just recommend that you check the show schedule because you do not want to miss the Sesame Street Party Parade. Trust me, the kids will love it. SeaWorld Orlando Special Events Each month, it seems like you'll experience a great special event at the park. And for me personally, I've been able to experience their Summer Spectacular, their Haunted Hallow Scream event, the more kid-friendly SeaWorld Spectacular event, and SeaWorld's Christmas Celebration. The park also offers a great concert lineup throughout the year, as well as some delicious food festivals. Hands down, SeaWorld Orlando offers the best special events at any theme park in Florida. The shows. You will find three main animal shows at the park. Dolphin Adventures is a fantastic dolphin show that in my opinion is the best overall show at the park. Orca Encounter is where you're going to get to see the beautiful orcas up close and it really is something else. And I recommend sitting in the splash zone. Sea Lion and Otter Spotlight is a show full of laughs, smiles, and cuteness, especially that otter. Each of these shows lasts anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes, and again, I recommend getting there early. The Best Bars. The Flamecraft Bar offers some amazing views with even better drinks. 
It is also hard to go wrong with the bar at the Shark's Underwater Grill. What to do if it rains? It rains all the time in Orlando, especially in the summer. But the good news is, is that the rain usually lasts for just an hour or so. And SeaWorld offers a ton of stuff under a roof or indoors for you to experience when it does rain. And now it's time for some must know tips for you to have the best day ever at SeaWorld Orlando. Restroom tips. Everyone enjoys a clean restroom. So the two best, in my opinion, would be the restrooms that are located next to Icebreaker and the ones back behind Infinity Falls. Make go tip. This is the best roller coaster in the park, and depending on who you're asking, it's the best one in Orlando. So be sure to ride it in the very back row. Trust me, that drop in the back row is pure bliss. When are the best times to eat? I recommend not trying to eat between the times of 11.30 in the morning to 1.30 p.m. This is when the lines are usually very long for food. If it's open, ride the Sky Tower. SeaWorld Orlando's Sky Tower is the tallest attraction at any theme park in Orlando and is a must ride. For capacity reasons, there is a small $5 fee to ride, but the 6 minute ride will take you up 300 feet for spectacular views and is totally worth it. I recommend trying to ride this early on in the day because it does close due to high winds and thunderstorms which typically happen in the afternoon. Show Tips I recommend arriving to the show venue at least 15 minutes before the show starts. And on real busy days, I recommend getting there 30 minutes before. Trust me on that, because after working the show venues at the park for two years, I can tell you that these stadiums reach capacity very fast on busy days. Be sure to ride Infinity Falls, because you're going to be riding the best water ride in Florida. It's that good. And it features one of the tallest drops on any raft ride in the world. But the best part is, you're also going to get wet. So I recommend riding Infinity Falls before 12 because that is when the ride starts to get very, very busy. SeaWorld Orlando is not a half day park. There is so much to see and do here, you need to allocate at least a full day to experience all the park offers. And finally, it's time to talk about the secret aquarium that no one really knows about. And that is the Jewel of the Sea Aquarium. This amazing and beautiful aquarium is located inside of the Journey to Atlantis gift shop and is an absolute must-see. All you have to do is walk into the JTA gift shop and you'll see it. Now I really hope that my recommendations have made you even more excited about your upcoming trip to SeaWorld Orlando. And if you have any other questions about the park, feel free to reach out to me in the comments. Also, if you think of any other great tips, then please leave them in the comments for other viewers as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive, and keep riding coasters.